Hey folks, welcome back to Afterwork Gaming. We are back for more Deliver Us the Moon. Uh, last time, if you remember, we unlocked or we opened the vehicle bay, and now here are our objectives. We have to go outside and we have to realign the MPT pillars. And let's just take a look around because I'm assuming, there we go. I'm assuming we're gonna take a buggy. Looks like a couple of them, but let's just confirm this real quick. Yeah, looks like we can get in. Well, we're not going to do that right now. Let's just take a quick look around and see if we can see any... Well, anything, really. Run down the line. Uh, okay, and there's a second level up there, which is why we have this elevator. Let's turn on the flashlight. Okay, nothing of value here, or nothing, you know, interactable here. Let's see. Empty bay. A lot of bays here. But then again, last time... Oops, loud. Uh, last time, if you recall, we looked at a map of the entire lunar base, and it's actually pretty big. It's... fairly... expansive. This one just doesn't have any wheels. Oh, there we go. Is there anything we can look at here? No? Nothing? Okay. Um... nothing... Monorail delay could cost lives, but I can't read the rest of it. No? Okay, let's just, you know what, double check. Ace, you got something for me? Can you see anything? Worth interacting with, maybe from your perspective? No, no, not really. Okay. You know what, let's just take a quick look on the other side, then. What are these? This is... I'm gonna guess, yeah, these are probably to raise or lower the pylons here, so let's just go ahead and go past the buggy. Anything here worth interacting with? Nope, just spare parts. Uh, just an empty chassis. And a completely empty bay. Okay, let's go to the second floor. See what... actually, hold on. What's in here? Nothing's in here. Okay. Go inside... Uh, inside, let's go up to the second floor. I guess? Copernicus... Is this a station of some kind? Hold on. Monorail station, there we go. Destination Huygens. Well, I would imagine not a lot of people go to Huygens, yeah? Ceiling collapsed. And all this... Huh, all these bags are just lying around. There seems to be a bit of a mess. I would guess so, because last time, remember, we learned that uh, MacArthur, who is in charge of the Lunar Council, and I guess in charge of the base, basically sent his goon squad out to round up people uh, and then shove them onto a ship for something called Project Outward. Let's up there. Hold on. I'm assuming it's another station, right? Destination Tomba. All right, so that's the reactor. A whole bunch of helium-3. This is basically the, um, the fuel for the reactor. A lot of helium-3. Holy crap. Uh, a lot, a lot. Can we get in here? No. Okay. Um, there's an airlock and then there's nothing else. Okay, let's call up the elevator. Yeah, so last time we learned that MacArthur had sent out his goon squad to go ahead and round up a bunch of people, or basically everybody. And... And so I am assuming... Does this do anything? Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, we've looked around, and I think I know how that's supposed to work, actually. Hold on. Let's get into a buggy, because if it works the way I think it works, that should be pretty cool. Oh, wait. We get to drive it? Ah! <laughs> cool. Check it out, because I think... One... There we go. That's great. That is a great bit of... functionality. I mean, the idea behind it is a really cool functionality idea. 
Because what does that mean? That means... ...that you can only open those doors in a buggy. Cool. Uh, you can only open it in a buggy, and that means that you'll never have a false open. Okay, let's just mark it down and just figure out where we're going. So the monorails go off to those directions. Got some sort of towers. And we've got, assuming... Okay, so I'm assuming those are the two are the pillars. Alright, let's just drive over there. You know what? I gotta say, I am really, really happy this is not a cinematic. That this isn't like a hands-off thing that we actually get to drive there. Because... I don't know, just... It's, it's immersion. It, it helps tell the story more. It's like the liftoff sequence, you know, where you actually have to go flip switches in this game. Same idea. It's super cool, and I really appreciate uh, Ko Ken doing that. Yeah, and again, see, functional, uh, functionally, it works because you won't have those doors open. Oh, and there's a timer on our back. Okay, so we got three minutes of O2. Um, functionally, you wouldn't be able to really open the doors in theory without a buggy, which means again you don't get a false open, which means you know exactly what's happening when it does open. See. There's an ace port, which oh, we'll check out later if we have to, I guess. Nothing else, nothing else. What's in here? Maintenance shaft, another ace port. Maybe it's to open these doors. Okay, well, the door's open, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's go up here. Anything worth looking at? Nope, just pipes. Okay. And let's go out, I guess, another airlock, and we'll be back to three minutes of O2. Right, warning, no O2. Yeah, yeah. Nope, I can't make it up there by jumping. I can probably jump past the railing here. Perfect. Nice. I do like also the sort of the long strides that this guy takes. Um, I can't remember who it was an interview with. I think it was an interview with Buzz Aldrin where he explained that all the archival footage you see of the astronauts jumping... There's still two and a half minutes. We're good. We don't need the O2. Uh, you see the astronauts jumping on the surface. Uh, he explained that that's... That's not just them having fun. He, he basically said that because of the, the way the lunar surface is composed, that's the most efficient way of getting around, is sort of bunny hop. Because if you walk, you're just gonna... It's, you're just gonna tire yourself out. You're gonna start floating away anyway, because you just you're not aware, or you're you're not as used to. I run by something? Did I make that up? Yeah. Let's see what's in here. If it is an emergency. Oh, it's just O2. Is this more O2? Just to be sure. Yeah, more O2. Okay, well we don't need it. We're still at. Eh. You know what, let's grab one. There's two of them here. Let's grab one of them. Two minutes of O2. We're plenty of time, I'm sure. And if not, we'll just pop down here. Okay. Anything behind us? No. We're pretty much up at the top. Ah, there we go. Remember the schematics we saw a little while back with the chair? So here we are, the chair. Anything in? No. Oh, and we got O2 bottles in the back. And as we saw, so there it is, we're recharging our O2. So I'm assuming that's the energy collector, right? Hey Ace, you ready? Let's figure this out, eh? Local microwave power transmission. Okay, but what do we... Let's spin around and see what we can aim at. Do we aim it at... Let's see, I, I wonder, do we aim it at the other tower so there's just kind of a loop? We close the loop in the system. Let's see, let's see. And any second now, there we go. Okay, or we aim it at the hub, but let's just try here. Nope, press an F, nothing happening. So let's go up here. And perfect.
All right, pillar one aligned. And we don't really care about the O2 now because we're about to get back in. Okay, let's drive off to the second pillar. Let's just go through this crater. Oh, and okay, so space is to break. Oop. Last minute swerve to avoid the rock. All right, so we're powering that up. I'm assuming we're powering it up because we're going to end up taking the monorail then, because there is the monorail heading to Tom uh, to Tomba. And then the fact that these things are misaligned tells me, and that it wasn't really pointing at anything, tells me that somebody shut them off. That that's not. This isn't a mistake. I am 100% convinced now that they. Remember last time Tomba had some sort of accident. I'm sure that that was Isaac Johansson's doing. I'm almost positive that somebody also turned off or, you know, rotated away the, um, the, the, the pillars. Okay, one, two. Perfect. Let's get out. And here we go. Yeah, so it would be like this sort of bunny hop. Although here, since we don't have soft soft lunar dust at our feet. It's much easier to just walk around. But I do like that the sort of... Oh, here we go. See? Now we need Ace. Unlock the doors. Perfect. Let's go upstairs. Uh, here, I do like that the lower gravity persists throughout uh, the facility, despite the fact that, you know, there is oxygen, etc., etc. I just like that. I don't know. It's a little touch. It would you wouldn't you would think it wouldn't be a thing that that really people realize, but I I like that that it's there's no like oh it's artificial gravity etc etc no it's you're on the moon it's a lunar base there's lower gravity in the base okay okay, okay. we have an O2 box here just to know okay we do perfect. But we're at two and a half minutes. Let's go up. Okay. And so once we align the set... Whoa, hello. Oh, I see. You know what? Let's go around this way then. Okay. Run, 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 run. Oh, I like that. I like that if you run the counter on the back... Uh, turns red to show that you're expending more oxygen than usual, I guess. But okay, you know what? I like this. I like the idea that, I mean, it's not a very extensive example of it, but, you know, it's a permutation. It's They show you the thing, they show you where the O2 would be, they give you the idea that there is a tool for you to survive, and then they test you by putting up a hardship like the venting. That's nice. I like that. I appreciate that. Okay, now. Those... Those globes, I'm pretty sure. All right, and let's aim up. This should be the quickest way to point to the uh, Copernicus outpost. And connect. Perfect. All right, and that should be it. Monorail should now be online. Power station online. Local power supply detected. Person. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, let's get in. Katuna, is that you out there? God, I hope that's true. We saw what happened at Pearson. I thought you were... But just now, we detected activity in the MPT network. We haven't seen that in years. It seems to have been a local power transmission, isolated from the power source at the Tombo facility. Something must be wrong at the reactor there. Tombo isn't close, though. Traveling by foot would be suicide. Perhaps you can find another means of transportation inside Moon Hub. Vacation, I hope, 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 don't want to do that necessarily, but I see the facility over there, and I'm thinking, if we're in a buggy, why not just drive over, yeah? 
Okay. What? Nope, stop. You got three minutes to explore, right? Let's check this place out. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is this what I think it is? Kind of weird. It's funny, but it's weird, right? Like, it is the moon landing, plus the rover. <laughs> I like that it's a green screen. I can't tell if it's a green screen because it's the joke is it's a green screen, or this is just a screen to protect against the elements. Because here's the thing, if the joke is, oh, it's a, it's they filmed the moon landing on a set, well, they filmed it, but they filmed it on the moon? You know what I mean? But that's okay. Here, let's, uh, can I climb in there? No? No, but I know what I want to do. Turn this way. Ace. Give me a picture. That's what I'm talking about, Ace. Now give me, make me look good. Yeah. That's it. Right there with the spire in the back. Alright, that's enough of that. That's funny though. I like that. And like the lights are on. I you know what? I'm I'm gonna guess that this is just a historical preservation thing. But uh who knows? You know, maybe the idea is once we came back for one of the later Apollo missions, we just started filming stuff on a green screen. Just because they got too lazy, they just eh, they just land and they just film it. It's fine. All right, let's go see if we can get to that facility because, you know, like I said, we're in a buggy, why not? Let's just go ahead and take the trip. And um, if anything, we'll come back and we'll we'll grab the monorail. All right, whoa, 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 whoa. I see, okay. Okay, well, that explains why. <laughs> that explains why we have to take the monorail and we can't just drive around on a buggy. Let's go back. I'm pretty sure we just follow the tracks. It will take us back to the hangar. To the vehicle bay. What's this sign say? It's probably Copernicus, right? Copernicus, communications, peers. Uh, yeah. Let's go this way. Okay, so, my bet is... We have to... Well, hold on. Let's just... Reset the power in the moon hub. Well, alright, fine. Never mind. Um, but if we have to go to the the MPT, then we probably have to go check out Tomba, and if we gotta go check out Tomba, I'm almost positive the next thing after resetting the power is, oh, the monorail is now powered up, let's, let's hop the one that's waiting already to go to the crater. Man, that's so cool. <laughs> Kinda, I really hope that in my lifetime we get a lunar base, man. Like, I don't even want to... I mean, I, w I would love to be on there, or I would love there to be space tourism before uh, I die. But I gotta tell ya. No, can I reset it from here? Hold on. If not, I guess we have to leave. But, like, I just want there to be a base. I just want to know that, like, we're doing stuff in space, that it's not just like, Oh, we got a space station. Alright, it's great. Moving on, right? Like, I don't really necessarily care about Mars, per se. I mean, it'd be great, but like, start a base somewhere, man. Just start it off-world. I want that. Okay, let's go ahead. We'll probably get to reset here, right? Okay, diagnose. Copernicus Moon Hub MBT transmission receiver online. Yeah, we just did that. Connection to the network, MPT network failed. Not surprising. No incoming MPT signal from Tomba. Not surprising. Diagnose at Tomba. Oh, okay, there we go. Monorail to Tomba offline. Power systems. Uh-oh. So, oh, it's online, thank you. Kind of figured that. Okay, so it does look like, let's just double check, leave Copernicus Moon Hub with the monorail, perfect. But before we do that, I saw a couple of new things come up, like this. 
Though Ace, show me what you got. Today. Today we find ourselves at a crossroads. The catastrophic events that have unfolded at the Tumbo facility have opened our eyes to the truth that cannot be denied. We have lost friends, colleagues. Our fellow colonists gave their life for a hopeless cause, for a dying planet that we can never sustain. We used to call it home, our pale blue dirt. But the Earth we know today is a withered husk, a shadow of its former self. The MPT chained us to a barren rock. But no more. All of you gathered here our survivors. You're here because you're mankind's strongest, the smartest, the brightest. Together, we will dare to leap and risk greatness, start a new age of discovery. Like our ancestors, that fateful moment, they first set out to explore new worlds. We can turn back and confine ourselves to a dying planet. Or we can look outward. Now is the time to act. Make your decision and make it now. A new beginning dawns for humanity, and it dawns today. Okie dokie. Let's just tab database that real quick. The Great Leap Forward. In a speech held before the lunar colonist, William MacArthur pays his respects to casualties of a recent, unreported catastrophe at the Tombaugh facility, that's the reactor, denounces the unrealistic expectations of the WSA, and offers an alternate route to a prosperous future for humanity. Outward. Recorded 23 September 2054, zero minutes before the blackout. So literally, the moment of the blackout. Okay, well... I mean, we sort of knew that uh, that was the idea. It's, uh, we knew, sort of, we knew. But the thing is, it still leaves open the question of what exactly is this ship? I mean, is it like a generation ship, or do they know exactly where they're going? Are they going to Mars? Are they going somewhere else? And certainly, they're leaving the Earth behind, so we understand that. Now, one thing I want to do real quick before we head back to the monorail is I'm going to do a quick run around all the rooms we saw before to see if there's anything new now that the power has been restored. If there is, I'll show it to you guys. If not, then uh, basically I'll just pick it up right here in front of the vehicle bay again, and then we'll just go off to the monorail, okay? So I'm going to cut it here, and I'll be back. All right, hey guys. Uh, so there was nothing. Uh, it was worth. It's, it's always worth looking, because why the heck not, right? If there is, you get a little more story. If there isn't, well, I mean, you didn't really sacrifice all that much. Okay, so, the monorail station, that one is powered. Let's see if there's anything new here. No? No. Okay, so the, the new ACE transmission is, I think, up there, because there was one next to a monorail. And it is here. Okay. Let's watch this, and then we'll hop aboard. What was that speech all about? MacArthur can't decide this on his own now, can he? Look, we don't call the shots here, okay? Now help me out with this stuff. Put that down, Frank. Don't you know what helium is for? Don't you think it's strange it's here instead of next to the reactor it's supposed to power? Of course I do, it's just a... Just what? Should we accept everything they say? Do you even realize what the consequences are if we leave while the MPT is offline? What choice do we have? What do we really have to go back to? Floods, dust storms, blazing heat? I'm done. The council's giving us a second chance and I'm not wasting it. Now I'm done talking. Just give me a hand. Give... Okay. The burdens of adherence. Shortly after MacArthur's speech, lunar colonists make final preparations to carry out MacArthur's outward plans. Not all agree that it is the right course of action, but while some protest out of concern over Earth's fate, others perceive wisdom in MacArthur's words. Recorded the same day, two hours after the blackout starts. Okay, well, and it's nice that they, you know, it explains what all this Helium-3 is doing here, because I'm assuming it's now going to be the fuel for whatever the, the ship is that they get on. Huh, okay. Let's get on this monorail and see what happens then. Uh, still leave? Yes, yeah, still leave with the monorail. I 
anything else on this? No, no, there's nothing else. Okay, let's hop in. All right, Ace. Take us out. Ooh, we got a transmission. This is Sarah Baker, lead engineer at Pearson Space Station. I was sent to investigate the blackout together with station mechanic Rolf Robertson. I was attacked by an AZ unit and lost consciousness. The reasons for this attack remain unclear. It seems my expedition partner has left. And I am unable to contact Pearson Space Station or any of the other facilities. I'm going to cross the frontier now, passing Copernicus Outpost 1, to get to Tombow and try to figure out what caused the MPT failure. Whoever finds this, please try to contact me. Alex, end recording. Interesting. Okay, well, you know, look, it's good that Sarah survived. I honestly, I thought that she died from that security drone. It's good to know that she survived. Hello. What's this? Gain access to the monorail terminal. Um, there's no, the door's closed here? The door's closed here. Okay, so we got to get out here. Sorry, Ace. A is E. No, Ace. You know what? We're going to put a pin in it. I think we're going to call it here. Um, next time we're going to come back, we're going to pick up an Outpost 1 and figure out what the heck is going on. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend. Let's me know that I'm doing something right. Let's me know that you guys want to see more of this stuff. If you think that I missed anything, you think I should be playing this game differently, you want to see a different game altogether, by all means leave a comment. And in any case, I'll see you all next time. Brother, <laughs>